Hey there, this is Mr. Bell in Economics 203, and today I will be teaching you about the concepts of imperfect information and asymmetric information, as well as giving you some examples that will hopefully help you understand them a little better. But before we begin, I would like to give a shout out to my new creative manager, two part Libby Bell, who is helping me with my videos. All right. So this chapter starts out with a comparison of imperfect and asymmetric information. Asymmetric information is defined as a situation where two parties involved in an economic transaction have amounts of information. In similar terms, it is when one person in a market transaction knows more than another. Imperfect information is where either the buyer the seller or both are less than 100% certain about the qualities of what they are buying and selling. Now let's give you some examples of asymmetric and imperfect information in goods, labor, and financial service markets. The first example is Johnny. One day Johnny is just minding his own business when his stomach starts hurting. Turns out he has appendicitis. Johnny goes to his local hospital and finds a doctor who says that he can take Johnny's appendix out no problem. Johnny has absolute faith in the doctor, but what he doesn't know is that this doctor is performing his first appendectomy on Johnny. This is an example of asymmetric information in the labor market. The doctor knew this would be his first surgery. But he didn't tell Johnny. To prevent this kind of situation in the labor market, occupational licenses ensure the quality of a worker. Licenses are given by the government to workers who pass certain tests to complete or certain amount of education. A whole array of jobs require federal or state licenses. Doctors, teachers, accountants, lawyers, embalmers, IT, to name a few. Licenses ensure that the professionals in these jobs have the right experience and knowledge so that what happened to Johnny won't happen to someone else. But licenses also limit the number of jobs available to the average American in the workforce. The second example is Farmer Susan. Susan grows apples and sells them at her local farmer's market. This year, some of her apples got worms in them. But because she needs the money, Susan chooses some of the best looking apples to sell at the farmer's market. Little Matt buys one of the apples and after he gets home he finds a worm in it. This is an example of both asymmetric and imperfect information in the goods market. Susan knew that there had been worms in some of her apples, but she wasn't sure if there were any worms in the apples she had chosen. Little Matt didn't know if there was a worm in his apple either. In the goods market, there are three things that protect buyers from purchasing damaged or incorrect goods or lemons. A warranty is the promise of the seller to fix or replace a good for a certain amount of time after the purchase. A service contract requires the buyer to pay more and the seller to fix any issues with the good after a set time period. And a money back guarantee is a promise for a full refund if a buyer is not satisfied with it. The third example is Larry. Larry wants to take out a loan for a house, so he goes to his banker. His banker looks at his papers and job and decides that Larry will be able to pay off the loan. Larry gets the money and buys a house. But a week later, he loses his job and is no longer able to pay off his loan. This is an example of imperfect information in the financial services market. Neither Larry nor his banker knew that he would be losing his job right after he took out a loan. Collateral and cosigners are often required by banks to make sure that a loan will be paid. Collateral is property that the bank can sell or seize if the buyer cannot repay the loan, and a cosigner is someone who legally promises to repay the loan if the original borrower does not. To reach equilibrium, both sides must have all of the information. 
Without the proper data, it can be hard to reach an equilibrium price and quantity. The ideal situation would be a thick market with many buyers and sellers, but imperfect and asymmetric information discourages both buyers and sellers from becoming too involved in the market for fear of being given a lemon. In conclusion, having as much correct and complete information as possible helps the markets function efficiently.